Hi. Hey, Garen. What's up? What's up, chat? Um, nice to see you. Welcome back to Little Help. This is the stream that endeavors to help with maybe a couple of things that you're seeing us do over here at Mint Potion that don't make a lot of sense or kind of do. And maybe I can answer some of those questions. Thank you, uh, Schizophrenia Euphoria, for the host. As you can see, I'm hanging out with chat today. I also have this magnifier going on today. Ooh, where you can see where my mouse is pointing. Just a little bit disorienting, but that's okay. And I'm going to just delete this thing. Let's just remove it. I don't even want to look at it. So this is Family Tracker, guys. As you can see right here. Zero CC Family Tracker. And I'm using, using the second to last version that's come out. Hello, Albatross. Welcome back. It's, well, it's way cool to be here. I feel like I haven't streamed in a dog's age, which is, I'm pretty sure, maybe it's been like a dog, a dog week, like a couple of days, or a, a, a couple of dog minutes. <clears throat> We're going to kind of go over the interface. I want to show you this super cool tool that you might be familiar with on another stream we do, like yesterday, called PowerBlock. Using this fantastic tool. Look, hey chat. Hey NES dude. You're probably not around, but congrats on your stream, dude. That was a cool project. Um, we're making a number one new song. Hot Dog Minutes. Oh man, <laughs> I wish I could work on that on stream. <laughs> I guess I I could, I could do whatever I stink and want, but we're kind of busy closing up the year, and Jake's got to finish Shovel can, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. Uh, Family Tracker. So I'm using the second to last version because I had issues with the audio on this version. And you might think that I'm going to have issues with the audio here um, or with the last version. Because like when you open it up, it doesn't make any noise. This, the software has a whole bunch of keys, um, a whole bunch of voices. You can see here I have a pulse, one and two, a triangle, a noise, and a DPCM, a sample channel. Um, but this is where this is where Jake's chip tunes come from, and so I've kind of been trying to pick up um, just the basics. Um, I mean, I would even go so far to 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 say, "Oh, let's just install it and open it and do all that stuff." But I don't, I don't want to. I just want to have it open, have it kind of ready to go. You can probably find it if you guys go to chat and you type in a uh, OCC or zero CC, like it says there. Nightbot will give you this list of programs. Um, and that's a cool thing to do. <laughs> if you want to actually get this thing. Um, let's see what we can actually do with this. There's, uh, there's file, edit, patterns, module. So file, edit, normal kind of looking stuff. View, help, normal looking stuff. Tracker, weird. Um, this is going to be, looks like our transport control type of material. Um, we have instrument control, which also is accessible through right clicking. Um, let's see. Looks like song control. Looks like songs in uh, Family Tracker are called modules or projects are called modules. All right. And inside of a module, we can actually make new songs. So I have a number one new song that has no name. And um, I can call this song a little help. Uh, not to be confused with the disease one, or something like that. And I'll just call this Basics. And I think I might have actually made a track earlier called Basics. That's right. Um, my name is also Angry Crow. Um, my copyright is going to be Creative Commons by Association. Uh, let's go non-commercial. Look at all of these letters. Anyway, um, here we have Song Setting. Where we can say the number of rows that we want inside of a single pattern. This area, our little matrix here, will have an index of each pattern that we have, and then that'll be for each row, and each column will represent, if we can kind of tab through and tab back, if you look in this field, oh, over there, you can kind of jump between uh, tabbing and then shift tabbing, like you would in maybe a text editor. 
<clears throat> using the arrow keys as well, up and down to navigate. <clears throat> and we can also um, navigate that field by steps. So there are a couple of arrows here, up and down to adjust those guys. Like two, three, four will probably also affect how we get around by pressing the arrow keys as well but only vertically, as horizontally, we have a bunch of little parameters um, that I'll get into in a second, because we're just looking at the framework of this spreadsheet, this notorious spreadsheet. We also have Compact View, which hides a couple of those parameters, but it's not as useful because I wanna see in pretty big detail, hopefully you guys can read this and let me know if we have any weird technical issues on um, what's going on in here, but what else we got? We can add and remove patterns, it appears. If I hit that, boom. Oh, weird. It actually changes the number of that pattern, which is kind of neat, because you can do, um, you can write parts kind of non-linearly um, and have a command that goes to this pattern of that section and so on and so forth, um, or in this module. <clears throat> and, geez, where at the begin? I mean, really, the most basic thing. I have looks like a hex output, a hex view, 3F, or 64 rows. Let's say I want it to be, you know, look, 3E is before 3F in hex. I'll just put that back. Now, a uh, pro tip that I uh, got from Drake is that I actually do not want to, um, look at that, more frames. I actually do not want to change the tempo of the song. As a matter of fact, it makes far more sense to change the speed and to adjust the ticks um, basically per step. So to get a sense of all of this stuff and what any of it could possibly mean and you know any of these things, let's actually make noise. So Family Tracker allows you to go into this note entry kind of area. This also helps somewhere. You press F1 according to this guy down here. Hey, no. Yeah, you. All right. And <clears throat> really, the first thing that you need is make an instrument. So we can add an instrument by clicking this guy. We can add an instrument by right-clicking in this area. We can also add an instrument, boom, by going up to the new instrument thing, all of which are equally good. The second that I have a new instrument, it's an instrument that'll be codename 00. And we can adjust the name of that instrument and a lot of its parameters. And I mean a lot. All right, first and foremost being volume. All right, and so these are essentially, if you're familiar with any other type of synthesis, envelopes. Um, volume, arpeggio is a um, step in a certain amount of time. <laughs> it's totally good. Um, pitch is a, what appears to be, what, 4-bit range or something like that, or 8, negative 128. To positive 177, it's 256 values. That's I don't know <laughs> an A bit range. Um, high pitch is a type of pitch. It's kind of different. And duty noise applies to certain. Actually, I guess all of these types of synthesis. Um, we have two voices, and now that we have an instrument, we can talk about how those two voices sound, right? So when I press any key on the keyboard that I have here in the zero. I get the first Z. It's going to probably be at octave 1 or octave 0. You can see where I adjust the octaves over here. Doink. Looks like I have about 8 octaves of space. Uh, starting at the very low. Inaudible. Wait a minute. Does that even work? <laughs> starting at the very low. Um, and of course, working its way upward. What are you? One zero. Ooh. Ooh, that's so low. I can't even hear it. There we go. To another octave up here. Let's just keep my mouse up there so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I've set up a keyboard so you can a uh, keyboard shortcut. And so these rows, um, starting I guess from if you're on a QWERTY keyboard, the left shift, um, that zero all the way. The shift on the opposite side are the white keys on your keyboard. I'm going to go down an octave. 
Um, beautiful, graceful. Um, and in the row above, so like ZX, or sorry, SDF, you know, ASD row, that middle homish row, um, you have accidentals. So like C, C sharp, D, D sharp, that type of thing. Or E flat, if you're one of those people. I'm, I'm more of an E flat guy, personally. Um, same thing going up here. Brilliant. And the row above that, your QWERTY row, if that's the type of keyboard you have, has an actually the same pattern going across. So, using um, 2 and 3, for example, in that place. So, I actually have a bunch of notes. I have almost four octaves of notes at my disposal with just a regular keyboard. And so, I, you know, I'm not doing input with a, um, with a MIDI keyboard, though they say, you know, that's totally doable. I don't mind that at all. Um, <clears throat> but we don't have anything actually playing, right? If I hit the play button up here, we have a little transport, right? I hit play, our track will start to run, but I don't see anything. You know, I'm not hearing nothing. I don't got a sense of what the speed of the song actually means. The tempo, which I've been advised to not adjust, that doesn't do anything for me. Now, I can play music while it's playing, for sure, but that really doesn't do anything for anybody. So, <clears throat> let's input some notes. Trackers have a very interesting um, kind of tendency about them. They have a weird property. Um, where if I hit space, I kind of go into an int to an, an edit mode. If you use like a V or Vim, um, it's 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 effectively the insert note kind of key. So now I have this guy, and I can see that I put C two in, or you know on my keyboard right now with this octave, the Z key of this instrument, instrument zero zero. Now if I'm lucky or smart. I should rename this instrument because, let's see, how do I name this guy? Oh, here we go. Get out of my way. You're not called new instrument. You're called maybe like normal pulse or something like that. Or vanilla. Let's call it that. That's because we didn't do anything to this instrument. Do it. So now I have instrument zero zero, which is vanilla. This is just the vanilla noise that Family Tracker makes when you make a new instrument. Um, let's see. How about I change the step size now to four, and that'll allow me to put an, to enter a note on every one of these dashes on every blue dash. So let's do some arpeggiation, I guess. So we'll skip. Uh, how about I don't press space? So, C. <laughs> and maybe going back down. And I think I might have wrapped around there. But now you can see... I have a bunch of instances of telling the tracker to play this note with this instrument at this time. And all of these like very discrete operations are super important um, because they that's how you tell a computer when to do something. You don't give it a general notion. You say, exactly do this now. <laughs> um, you know, and to listen to. So I'm going to remove this frame from my song really quickly. Um, which, not the one that I'm working on, but the one that I had added to it, so that way, when I play through, hopefully it loops, right? So up here, the play button. Excellent. Let's do that. All right. So, now that we have a instrument going, we can kind of have a look a little bit more into what the effects we can have on this instrument, what this instrument can actually do. Below we can see that keyboard input, which is actually kind of an interesting thing. But let's mess around with the patch a bit. 
Now, immediately there's nothing I can really do in the sequence editor, and in order to make a difference, I need to add steps. And so you can see now there are steps. If you might be able to see this little green line that's kind of jutting across, let's make an eight step pattern. And so now I have this pulse that is hitting for what is that, 15 milliseconds? But we can also draw a bit of a tail. And that gives our sound more of an attack. And that is a start in the right direction. Alright, what else do I want to do? Oh, just mess with the other stuff, I guess, right? So arpeggio is similar to pitch. Um, in the sense that we will actually offset. Our starting point. But the more that I add, you can see that the pitch will modulate over the course of this over the course of this sound. So let's maybe like can I make a shape with that? Right? So we get kind of this creepy sounding thing. But we actually have a lot of range. Um, and this is very useful for sound design. Like we we're talking about 100 milliseconds. I have six steps inside of that. Each one is about 14 milliseconds. Ooh. Actually, that's kind of cool. Let's make that last step uh, zero, though. So that it'll kind of end on our note. So, I'm into that, actually. And we can actually, if we wanted to make that uh, change more discreet, like what I would like to do is maybe add more steps, but have the differences between them be less interesting. So, here's negative 8. And you can kind of count. These are semitones, correctly. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I have that magnifier. How convenient. All right. So now we're actually playing the tracker like a synthesizer. And this is useful for a whole number of reasons. But this is actually a good place to stop kind of with that patch. This is no longer vanilla. I might want to duplicate this instrument or make another instrument. I think I might just call it Vanilla Donut because it's more of a donut now, I think, than it is not a donut. And um, you can actually use... So think about the instrument. Is the NES has, by default, right, these voices. It has two pulse voices, which are essentially squares. And, well, a square is a perfect pulse, so it's got an even... Um, phases, or even period, of on and off. And triangle is a little bit more of a rough animal. But I can apply that instrument, or this voice, but um, I can apply this instrument to any voice. I can, I can select the triangle area. Excellent. And so we're using the same instrument inside of the triangle voice, and it's we're we're telling that um, we're telling this oscillator or this noise generator, it's, you know, how to make sound using a small program. And so you can actually get a lot of things done by switching instruments during the course of the song. Um, one voice can address as many instruments as you have in your song. Um, and those voices work across all areas. So now let's go into the noise area, and look at that. It's like... I like noise a lot because it has strange, like, um, strange modulations. Like, if I go up to the higher octaves here, um... <laughs> 
Post industrial donut and vapor donut. Absolutely. So noise is a really interesting channel. Because not only can you get strange modulations out of that, but I think even like if you use a new like you know regular regular food a blank new instrument i think i'll call this a regular <laughs> uh even though we'll probably patch it again what you would expect to hear on a noise channel is just noise but the difference between that and if i select our instrument that modulation it continues that vo it continues that volume envelope it continues um the arpeggiation and the other things that we have going on in here and we can see that happening live um, if I don't want that thing to carry on at the end, then I can remove that last bit of um, <clears throat> of volume from that envelope. And there are a couple of other ways to actually turn off the note um, as we play. So let's say maybe I want to do that here, right? Um, there is a key. Let's see. Is it tab? No, it's not tab. It is this guy. The pipe? Do 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 or one. It's one of these very Oh, how about that? One. So one if I do that, let's do skip four, turn off four. So what that will do is um turn off that note immediately after it is hit. So the time that the computer generates that noise, or the distance between, I guess what's a tick, between frame, you know, or, you know, or tick zero, 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 and zero, one right there, you can see, using my other hand, pointing in the right direction. Um, that'll determine how long the shortest note can be when we're talking about speed, basically tick speed, or six, I don't knows. Um, <laughs> it probably has something to do with the clock speed of an NES. Um, versus the default mode for each note, as you'll see what follows here when we get into this area, actually, they'll just sustain because the volume envelope doesn't actually close. We say play this note until we tell it to play another note, and that's just what it does. Neat. Cool. So let's um let's use a regular triangle to play maybe some kind of bass line to go with this. Uh, so this is all fortunately in C. So that's way too high. I have a keyboard shortcut set up for bringing down my octave, um, and we can change our keyboard shortcuts over here with our configuration guy, which I have to look behind the screen. I can't see anything. Imagine. Edit. Uh, I don't know. I mean, believe me. Otherwise, you know, we can we can go to keyboard shortcuts later. Here's where you change octaves. It's next to the thing that says octaves. Go figure. But I want something that's a lot lower for my triangle. Ooh, get some volume on that. Yeah. All right. And let's change our step as well. And of course, I have a keyboard shortcut for that. So I think eight, you know, playing kind of with the rhythm, using the math of music on this kind of sound. And just, I want to play with the root of where that appreciation is heading. So, bum, bum, maybe. And if I press space to enter note mode, and I'm like not sure what it was, like if I make a mistake or something, it's not adding more notes. So when I'm sure, I'm like, and then I want that to come after. And I can hit space, get that guy in there, and maybe like, yeah, let's do that. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, octave above? Alright. Repeat, and, uh, let's see. Yeah. And, uh, one more. Kinda have to go back. Perfect. So now I have a bass line using, over here you can see, instrument one play against my strange vanilla donut that is on pulse one so let's give that a shot um it kind of works it's like rock and roll 
हो Now I kind of want that the end of that tail here that's arpeggiated I want that to kind of come out of it that tunnel if I, I just make in tune in tonal ooh cool I can dig that um so let's not make any crazy adjustments so triangle, uh, I think it's F9 or something to stop it. F8. All right. I don't know. There's probably like a play. Ah, you can set that to anything. Set it to MIDI. Set it to whatever you like. Um. So triangle is a really weird animal. For example, with a pulse wave, where I might have the ability, which we're not really quite into this yet, but now's a good time as any. I can enter in, instead of a note value, I can enter in a volume value. Um, so kind of the order of things that you can do with each column, all right? We have the note and the octave, right? Followed by the instrument number, right? Followed by the volume of that instrument. And by default, it will play the default volume or the volume that is inside of that envelope that we set up inside of the instrument itself. And then we have an effects and its parameters. Um, and as far as I understand, triangle, if I hit space to enter in a volume, I believe it has volume controls, but they don't work. Or it doesn't, or like effects controls don't work. Like there's something really wrong with, <laughs> with this. I, I mean, effects has, have to work, right? Or volume has to work. That's like a basic, the basic thing that your tracker needs. Um, I, I mean, I could just be taking my experience with digital audio workstations for granted and saying that's totally not true. But let's have a look. Maybe, maybe it'll work. Let's see if, uh, let's see if that triangle changes tone. So in Family Tracker, if I want to just hear this thing by itself, I can click on, I can double click. There we go. And red voices are muted, and black voices are not. Triangle has no volume control because the hardware doesn't support it. Lord Nightmare, you're the guy. Now I can put volume commands into that channel, but I had a strong feeling that even though I'm giving it a one, it just doesn't do anything. So, thanks for correlating, or correlating that. DAC only has 16 steps and the triangle wave uses all of them. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, so can I just undo like any normal program and be free of that? Yes. At any rate, the triangle is flexible. It does, you, you can do some pitch modulation with the triangle. And that's how a lot of... Um, like bass, like sliding bass and kind of these other things are at work. Which I think, let's see, this is kind of a tricky thing to preview using this giant screen thing. But if you, if you click on the next area over, um, this is our effects region, right? And so I don't know if it's like G, um, but you can see right here um, in the bottom left corner <laughs> of FamiTracker, um, row delay and it says how many frames to wait before we play the note which is actually kind of a useful effect but the messed up thing is if the letter appears i believe if it's red then it is illegal or no yeah bright red is illegal for example whatever that is um dpcm pinch pitch sample pitch is something that the triangle channel cannot do and so if you want to mess around with any effect Ooh. All right. 
Gonna mess around with any effect. Basically put a letter. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe even also a number will work. No, it's just a letter. Um, place a letter inside of this box. And we can set the square duty. The square duty of triangle does kind of work. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have just a... Uh, I guess I have one more minute. I want to put one more thing in this. Um, all right. I just want to have one more minute. I didn't realize I was already running out of time. I'm moving so slow. Um, but we already have kind of a neat sounding thing. Um, let's just get like uh, something resembling a drum in there. We can get into DPCM in a minute because it's actually really, really interesting and really powerful. And I really want to have a, um, I really want to have a conversation with Lord Nightmare about kind of the capabilities and the implementations of DPCM. Um, Vert JK's favorite effect is 422. We should try it out. So if I go into here and I hit four, okay, it looks like vibrato, and it's going to be vibrato along x and y, speed versus depth. So x is two, and y is two. Let's give it a shot. Am I right? I'm right. But if I kind of hear it, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know that this is the appropriate channel for that. So, um, instead, what I think I might do is let me clear this out. Let me take down my step size so I don't get frustrated really quickly. Um, I guess is it clear? I'm trying to remember how they're. I guess I can just cut that. There we go. Um, try doing 400 after 422 on your next note. Oh, okay, so it is working. Okay, I just, I can't really hear it very well. I'm kind of sitting in an unideal situation. But, that's all right. Um, I want to make uh, something a little bit more gentle in my other Pulse channel. Um... So I'm going to call this the gentle donut or something like that. Or maybe the light. And um, I have an idea already in my mind of what I want the sound to be like. So I kind of want to have a similarly length, you know, good shaped envelope, which I don't know. I mean, I suppose this is completely reasonable to have, but I do like how you can draw that. Um, and and put a little bit more time into smoothing it and getting the kind of detail that you want. This is also something that you can get by drawing that effect out. But I don't need to be on octave 7. It's very string-like. And also maybe um, adjusting the duty cycle. And I should just do that in one frame. Um, there's, you can obviously do this with an effect. But notice how adjusting, really this only has th three effective modes. Oh, we didn't even talk about looping. Anyway. Actually, we can use that in this effect though. So let's get that kind of lighter sounding. Yeah, it's very NES. Um, and then we can take this section of this envelope and loop it, right? And that, in effect, can also kind of be a type of vibrato. If we give it a similar starting and ending point. Beautiful. Um... But I don't know, I mean, I would love to know, I would love to know from somebody in chat, um, kind of the length, like, or the, the, if you're making patches, and for, like, for the NES itself, because in this software you can have very, very, very wide steps, um, to make up these envelopes, and so, I don't know that that is legal in, <laughs> in real NESville. Let's see. Let's just 
do it. I think... Oops. I'm doing basically what your first <laughs> what your first family tracker track might sound like is oh wow I can just kind of put in notes that are all in the same scale and they all kind of wander through each other but this is might be my third family tracker um track I'm not starting from complete scratch um They all end on the same note. Excellent. So let's listen to this pattern. I've kind of made it to my time limit. I want to have like a clap or something, but I've made a couple of instruments. Um, we talked a little bit about effects. Maybe um, I will add, let's see. I'm curious about what OCC is. I think it's a type of arpeggiation. Um, why not? Ooh, look what I made. Look at the mistake I made. Uh, we can talk about that next time. Is that going to work? I don't know. I'm excited. Press play. That's a weird... Thank you, OCC Family Tracker, for your phone <laughs> for your phone technique. Um, let's see. It's fantastic. I really like the sounds. I'm gonna learn a lot. Of, I'm gonna learn a lot of this. Hopefully, I'll learn a lot with you guys. Um, sorry for keeping it so short. I feel like I got here late, but I've got to make sure that we're ready to go for Rockstar Academy, which is coming up. Just here in a second. But, um, hey, send me messages. I'm BennettManPotion.com. I'm Nick Spradley on Twitter. I'm Angry Crow on the internet. And I'll be happy to hear from you. We can talk about what the heck are we supposed to do with this family tracker thing. Um, I've been forbidden from using the VPC6. Or, is it, I don't know. The Konami Extended set, like Synthesizer module. Until I have maximized, basically, my ability with the actual standard NES set, according to Jake. And that is a limitation that I am willing to abide by while I get a at least amateur understanding of this tool. So um, thanks very much, and hold on for a minute, and I'll see you maybe in Sam during the Rockstar Academy thing. Maybe. Sweet! He's here. Oh, my God.